So, after yesterday's engine swap tutorial, with of course the S13 Silvia, which is pretty much the quickest vehicle to have the swap so far, which, again, if you don't know how to get the unlimited swaps, at least in GT7 1.17, then check out the video annotated at the top of the screen here to see how you can get that. But this time, we're turning our attention to the Mazda FD RX-7, which, of course, you can drop the iconic probably the most coveted engine swap really for most players or the most look forward to, the Mazda 787B engine. The quad rotor, of course. As far as this one goes, just like with the Silvia, there are certain things that I've done with it that you don't have to do, like the wide body, for example. You don't have to keep the wing. You don't have to do the uh, not anti-roll, the roll cage, I should say. And as you can see, I have fitted the diffuser on the back as well, down by the exhaust. Now, some people mentioned, and this was a really good shout for those who used my Sylvia tune, that by fitting that rear diffuser, you actually improve the speed a lot. So if you used my tune, definitely add that to it and you will make it even quicker. The reason why I didn't even bother to try that is because the last time we had diffusers was GT6 with the flat floor upgrade and it made them way slower. So I didn't even bother doing it, but that was a great call because it does make that car even quicker. For this one, it's not as drastic of a difference. I haven't tried removing the wing though. So if you want to give that a try, by all means do so. As far as the tuning itself, I'm not going to get into the visuals because I just told you what I've done already. Wider wheels, wider body kit you can see the the visual setup the arrow that i've got and you can change that around if you want to as far as the parts or actually i guess technically i, I should jump back to the garage because if you do have that 787b swap which of course you can win from one of the spins go into the tuning parts section and it's right here the r26b engine fully tuned just under a thousand horses so not as powerful as the sylvia but still, what it can do with that power being a rotary, of course, it goes beyond the raw numbers. As far as the tuning, nope, I'm also in the wrong menu again. <laughs> going back to the tuning shop, though, we're going to work from extreme down, as we usually do. Of course, I would always recommend NOS if you can for a top speed build. I've gone for the handbrake. You don't have to do that. It's just a personal preference thing. As far as the racing parts, the silencer, I believe, already comes with it. Of course, you want your racing brakes, your racing pads, suspension, the clutch and the flywheel, stage four weight. Of course, you need to do three, two, and one before that. You definitely want the fully customized transmission. I know I've gone for racing softs, which are kind of like qualifying or slick tires, just to get the maximum grip. I know some people prefer to mix and match, maybe soft on the back, hard on the front. You know, go for whatever you prefer in that regard. As far as the semi-racing stuff, again, I believe you've already got the fully customized computer. You definitely want that high RPM turbo, of course. The fully customized limited slip diff, obviously stage three weight. The body rigidity is down to you. You could go for that if you want to. If you don't, don't. As you can see, I haven't. As far as the power and the ballast, I always like to fit those, as I've said before, just so you've got the option if you need to restrict it in a certain lobby. Stage two weight, obviously, and then stage one weight right here. That's it as far as the parts. Now we'll jump back into the home garage and I'll show you what I've done for the settings. So with the aero that I've got, which as I said is the wide body kit, the wider wheels, standard wing, standard bumper on the front, standard uh, side skirts, and the upgraded rear diffuser, if you want to do exactly what I've done, you're looking at 813.8 points. So pretty high, pretty high for what it is. So as far as the tuning, Similar setup as far as handling to the Sylvia, but a little bit more hardcore in terms of how much camber, for example, we've got on this one, because it is a bit twitchier than the Sylvia is. So 120 mil and 110 mil for the ride height. The reason for the disparity between those is because they are naturally different heights anyway. So as you'll notice there, the lowest is 95 on the back and 85 on the front. So we're still keeping it pretty much leveled out but I would recommend those numbers. You could take it even higher if you want it to be a little bit more stable, but you will start to lose a bit of top end speed. For the anti-roll, that's as high as it can go. As far as the dampers, as low as they can go all round, then the highest on the frequency for the front and the back, three degrees of camber, so pretty heavy duty there. Neutral toe on the front and the back. For the diff, I've opted for 30 on all three, as you can see. You could change that up if you want to, and by all means experiment. 
As I've said with a number of my tunes in the past, the whole point of these is not to make you the fastest person in the world, it's to give you a canvas to work from. So this is the rough guidelines that you can use, and then put some personalizations in there, such as different visuals, different settings here and there. As far as the NOS, I always like to set mine on max power rather than duration, but again, it's a personal preference thing. Now, as far as the transmission, just like with the Sylvia, I actually haven't bothered to touch the individual gears because these engine swaps give you such broad stroke performance that you kind of don't need to. You could if you want to give yourself an edge, but I haven't even bothered and I've won events with it anyway, even without doing so. So the reason why I say this is a bit different, I've got 430 kilometers on the auto setting. You've only got five gears to work with, just like with the Sylvia. And the reason why I've set that on 430 is because of what I like to call draft potential. So when you get in behind something like a Red Bull, Tomahawk, Sylvia, whatever the car is, you need to be able to keep up with them and get that boost without hitting the red line and topping out. So 430 will allow this car to exceed 300 miles an hour with NOS and especially with slipstream. So that's the reason why I've done that. The downside to that is the acceleration is more sluggish, especially in fifth gear, and crucially the cruising speed without slipstream and without NOS is lower. So it can still do up around 270, but if you drop this setting to say 400, for example, you can increase the cruising speed to like 275, 276, or even higher. So the lower you go, the better the standalone speed will be, but you'll hit the red line quicker. So in other words, it will restrict the amount of slipstream you can do. So this is designed to allow you to slipstream as much as possible. Then as far as the ballast, the power restrictor, the ECU restrictor, none of that is touched. You want your downforce as low as it can go. And then for the rest, you can see all the parts I've fitted anyway. So that's it for the tune. Of course, there's a ton of personal variation that you can do in there, just like with all of my tunes. Now with it actually in an event, albeit just a custom race to show how quick it can go with NOS, as I said, you're looking up around 300. Now, cruising speed with this exact build is about 270, with not even much of a wind behind you. It's more of a side wind in the case of this event. Then with NOS, up around just below 300 miles an hour. And then with slipstream, easily over 300. And of course, that does depend on the slipstream setting. So if it's on weak, then maybe not. But if it's on realistic or especially strong, then of course you can exceed easily 300 miles an hour. And that's potentially without even using the NOS, so if you hit that, you are easily talking Sylvia speeds. Ultimately, I personally don't find this car to be as good as the Sylvia, which is so OP it's ridiculous, but it's not too surprising. This has no way near that kind of power to begin with, over 200 horsepower less. So, you know, it's good for what it is. I mean, it's a hell of a lot better than the RX-7 is with the standard engine, that's for sure. So for those like myself who love the FD RX-7, and of course, who doesn't love the 787B engine, give it a try. I hope you have a ton of fun with it. Absolutely experiment with the tune, because that's the beauty of doing these videos on YouTube. If you do something, change it, don't like it, and maybe mess it up, you can just come back to this video and reset it and use this as the default. Like I said, the canvas. So if you're new to the channel, if this is the first video of mine you've watched, be sure to check out my other speed tunes, both with and without engine swaps in many cases. And of course, stick around for more. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.